Attention duelists, we have big news today. Now I know what you're saying, Phoenix, what is that big news that you have to bring to us so early in the morning? Well, fact is, there are some notifications that just went out on Master Duel on this September 16th. And that that I'm going to bring to you now is the upcoming Forbidden and Limited List update. Just like the last time they had a ban list update, I put it into these deck slots so we can look at all the cards properly. And we'll get into that right now. So here are the cards that are going to be moving to the semi-limited list. Or coming off of the semi-limited list, I should say. In some regards. So, cards that were semi-limited. That we're just going to run down. Spiral Quick Fix is going from 1 to 2. It is normal summon. You can add any Spiral Gear card from your deck to your hand. And if you control Spiral Super Agent, you can discard this card, one card, Spiral Summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. These are not once per turn effects, so this will allow you to get multiple Spiral Gears to your hand and discard and summon itself repeatedly in a single turn. This was used a lot when Spiral was at the top of its game, and I want to say... You know, I'm not going to date myself. It happened a long time ago, and not long ago. But this is a bit of a bump to Spiral, and we, really, we should have seen this coming with Spiral Quick Fix being an icon that was... A reward on the current battle pass now this card is not going to semi-limited this card is going to unlimited harmonizing magician it is a level four pendulum scale eight with the effect of it can't be special from the extra deck cannot be used as a material for a fusion synchro or exe someone unless all the other materials are pendulum ma are magician pendulum monsters when this card is pendulum summoned from the hand you can special summon one magician pendulum monster from your deck in defense position except Harmonized Magician, put the gates effects, and banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use this effect of Harmonized Magician once per turn. Its Pendulum effect is all monsters you control gain 100 attack and defense for each face of Magician Pendulum monsters with different names in your extra deck. So, this card was used to bring out other Magicians, Pendulum Magicians, for the Pendulum Magician this deck. And this is going to be unlimited soon. A card that is going to semi unlimited is Double Iris Magician. Its effect is that it's always treated as a Pendulum Dragon card, if it is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add a Pendulum Graph card from your deck to your hand. Its Pendulum effect is that once per turn, you can target a Dark Spellcaster type you control, apply this effect, then destroy this card. Once applied, double any battle damage that monster inflicts to your opponent this turn if it battles an opponent's monster. The card is going to Unlimited. I do not play Pendulums, so I'm not going to even speculate on what this is going to impact, but I'm going to assume that they're all stoked. Here's something I'm stoked about. Orcist Harp Horror, going to semi-limited. Its effect is, you can banish this card from your graveyard to special summon one Orcist monster from your deck except Orcist Harp Horror. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except Dark Monsters. You can only use the effect of Orcist Harp Horror once per turn. This is a Destiny Hero Malicious for any Orcist monster, and it is going to be at two per deck, and it's going to be run at two in every Orcist deck. You don't see Orcist super often, but this might cause a change in that. So, be on the lookout. The next card going to Sim Limited is Dino Wrestler Pancret Tops. Its effect is if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Dino Wrestler Pancret Tops once per turn this way, and it has the quick effect that you can trigger any Dino Wrestler monster to target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. And you can only use this effect of Pancret Tops once per turn. This is a bigger body on a Cyber Dragon that can is most often used as a one of index to pop itself and pop an opponent's card, and is going to two now. So is this a bit more support for dinosaurs? Yes, but I wouldn't really put dinosaurs as king of the mountain right now. So this is just a bit of a buff for dinosaur decks in general, and a huge buff for dino wrestler fans everywhere. Uh, the next card going to some limit is Raigeki, with the effect of destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Harpy's Feather Duster, I believe. Let me just double check that. That's not how you spell that. Nope, RP's Feather Destroyer is still at 1. Uh, if I were to wager a guess as to why Raigeki is coming up to being semi-limited, it would be because of the amount of monsters that have destruction protections. Other than that, I just see this as making going second stronger. So, good for Raigeki. Another card coming off of any sort of limitations is Beginning of the End. Spell card with the effect of if you have 7 or more dark monsters in your graveyard, you can manage 5 dark monsters from your graveyard to draw 3 cards. This is just good draw cards going to run in just dark decks. It'll make that grass looks greener, stronger. I don't see this card very often. I don't see this coming up that much, but 
but to change the list. Something that is a bit more relevant is Trickstar Light Stage going to two. There's the Trickstar Field spell and has an effect of, sorry, it's a Trickstar Field spell, which they have at least two. And it has the effect of once card is activated, you can add a Trickstar monster from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, you can target one set card in your opponent's spawn trap zone. While it's card in the field zone, that set card cannot be activated until the end phase. And your opponent must activate it during the end phase or else send it to the graveyard. The big kicker on it is each time a Trickstar monster you control inflicts battle damage or effect damage to your opponent, inflict 200 damage to them. This really helps with the Trickstar burn strategy. And now it's going to two, which means it will be able to survive. If one gets popped, you can terraform out another. Another card going to two, Red Reboot, Counter Trap. When your opponent activates a trap card, negate the activation, and if you do, set that card face down. Then they can set one other trap directly from their deck. For the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, your opponent cannot activate trap cards. You can activate this card from your hand by paying half your life points. This was a good way to get around a lot of flood deck or floodgates that are just super annoying, so you just get out your board. Your opponent pops up a rivalry, it goes in match, or what have you, but there can be only one and you don't have a counter to it because no one really plays back row removal. Red Reboot was one of the ways that people had around this, at least for a turn. And now that it's going to two, it might see a bit more play, but I don't know. Good to see Floodgates getting taken down a notch. Speaking of Floodgates getting taken down a notch, Rivalry of the Warlords is going to two. Its effect is each player can only control one type of monster, send all other face-up monsters that control to the graveyard. It's a Floodgate, you see it all the time in Eldritch, it's annoying. It's going to two. Good. Goes in match. Another floodgate. Each player can only control one attribute of monster. Send all other face-up monsters that control to the graveyard. It's a floodgate. It's super annoying. It's going to two. Good. Here's some big boys that are coming down from the list. ABC Dragon Buster. It requires ASL Core, B Buster Drake, and C Crush Wyvern. It's special summoned by banishing the cards you control or from your graveyard. Once per turn, quick effect. Target one, you can discard a card, target one card in the field, banish it. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you contribute it to then target three banished light machine union monsters with different names and special summon them. It is perfectly reasonable for this card to come to two from one. Its effect is targeting, so a lot of cards cannot be targeted, so this is fine. It requires three monsters to make, so it's an investment. I see no problems with this card going to two. Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. This was a serious problem from back when... Oh god, I'm getting flashbacks. Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Requires one tuner and two or more non-tuner monsters. Once card is taken for summon, you can banish up to one card each from your opponent's hand, field, and graveyard. The card in the hand is chosen at random. This is a simple effect, but it can be a powerful one for taking three cards out of your opponent's control. This card does not show up often. It's a level nine synchro, which is a little awkward for some decks to make. Most of them going for either eight or 10. And I see no problems with this coming to two. There are already decks that are able to cycle Trishula around infinitely. So it going to being more accessible is not a problem. This is also probably in preparation of the ice barrier structure deck that is supposed to come out some point in the future. Another card that's coming off the list and going to two is wind up carrier Zen Mighty requires two level three monsters and it's an Xeed. Once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card, special summon a wind-up monster from your hand or deck. When a face-up wind-up monster on the field is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can detach a material from this card to target that monster and return it to the hand. Wind-ups don't show up in this game ever. I don't believe I've ever played against one, at least not in my memory. I could be wrong, but it's perfectly reasonable for this to come up. This is not a major component of the wind up infinite loop strategy as far as I remember so why it's at one in the first place I don't fully know but no one plays wind ups so giving them a bit more freedom could encourage people to play it maybe they'll be doing some more wind up stuff in the future I don't believe there's any other cards to bring to the game at this time just a bit of a buff to a retro deck no one plays anyway if anything they would have given the blue ass the effect of when you play this card kill your opponent that'd be a buff but, enough talking about the past, time to talk about the future. Another really good change, going to Limited. Water Enchantress of the Temple is going to 1. This is good. The Adventure Engine is annoying. People say, oh, it just gives your opponent an Omni Gate. It does a bit more than it gives your opponent an Omni Gate. 
It thins out their deck a lot. It actually gives them two bodies on board, which even if they're not using the Omni to Gate of Griffin, it's still a 2,800 defense body. They have a 2,000 defense token, which if you don't do something about, is able to bounce away with a card of yours away with Draco back. That's not just an Omni to Gate. That's more than that. That's two bodies, a bounce, and an Omni to Gate. That's four effects your opponent has at their disposal, which you have to deal with on your turn. So, Enchantress, being a major part of the Adventure Agent engine, being able to pull out Rite of Era's Mirror, is awesome. Glad this is going to one. Almost be ordered for his band. But, speaking of band, we have the big change. The one that I am super excited to tell you guys about. Christron Halky Fibrex is going to be banned. No more Halkadon pile. This is awesome. This has been such an annoying part of the game for so long. For years, people have seen Halky Fibrex and wondered why it wasn't banned and had tuner monsters suffer for Halky Fibrex's sins. No longer. The great evil has been defeated. The area of peace is upon us. The sun has risen. It is a new day for Master Duel. Things are looking up for everyone. If you're one of the people that just plays Halkadon Pile decks, I'm glad you're suffering. <laughs> you deserve it. I'm so glad that this little freak is going to be gone. I'm not even going to say this is a hit to anything, because I'm glad it's gone. I'm glad this card is getting banned. I think this is good for everything. Those are the ban list update changes. Just to go over a bit more Master Duel news while we're here, there's a new structure deck for Spellbook of Prophecy, for those of you who remember when that came out and are excited to do it again. This is something about the notice of cards that can be generated. Cards that are not in the game before that were forbidden under standard format, such as Pot of Green Example, will be craftable on September 30th. If you've been looking to play with friends using some cards that were not previously accessible, such as Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, that will be coming to the game in about two weeks. So something to look forward to with that. Other big news, the Synchro Xyz Festival is coming to the game. The event will start on the 19th and run to the 29th. Uh, there is a time limit for the duels of 300 seconds. Mm, let's check this. It's the same wisdom system as before, where you earn medals whether you, by playing the matches. Medals get you the rewards. The rewards are the mate of Quillbolt Hedgehog and the title of Synchro and Xyz Festival 2022. And... Mm, ba -ba -ba -ba. Does this say anything about the Forbidden Assembly list? already about what's going to be on or is that coming up later that looks like that's coming up later um i just want to double check to make sure the stuff i just went over is not just talking about the synchro xyz festival and i don't think it is Mm, yeah. I do believe that that will cover all of the news. Ah. It seems that the Spellbook of Prophecy structure deck is not here yet. Because I do not read. That will be available on the 19th. Uh, adding cards such as Crowley, the First Prophesier, Empress of Prophecy, Spellbook of Secrets, Spellbook of Knowledge, and Fortune Lady Every will be included. Those of you who are on the Yu-Gi-Oh! memes subreddit will know that Fortune Lady Every is the most powerful card in the game. Exciting stuff. Is she already in the game? Sure is. Hey, for you ours. A lot of the structure decks are pretty good about just getting URs for the value of 500 gems. Even if you already have the card, it might be worth it to buy the structure deck to decraft the URs for their dust, depending on how many of them you have. But that's just my two cents. My two cents doesn't go too far. Only about 15 minutes, which is about the time that I'm going to be ending this video. This video is short, so I don't think I had time to get any watchers. So, if you're watching this ban list update replay, thanks for giving it the attention. Bye.